Hi, everyone, and welcome to a special Sideshow New York Con artist interview. I am Andrew Seco, and today with me, I have the artist Christopher Meadows. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Andrew. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing great. I tell you, I'm over the moon. Uh, this opportunity has been 22 plus years in the making. And uh, it, it is, uh, to say it's surreal and to say that it is, it is an overwhelming honor is, uh, is a gross understatement. I am, I'm so thrilled to be here. And thank you to Sideshow for making this possible. Thank you for joining us. So you said it's 22 years in the making. Tell us a little bit about your artistic career. Well, I started um, drawing at a very young age, about the age of three or four, as best I can remember. Um, and I was always drawn to comic book characters. Um, to me, they just sort of, you know, literally leapt off the page. And there was a certain story element that was told visually. Um, and, you know, of course, um, my favorite characters were, you know, Superman, Batman, um, Spider-Man, the Hulk. And I started... Um, learning to draw by, by wanting to be a comic book artist. Um, I would mm -hmm. copy comic book covers and interior panels. Um, and, and that's where I got my start. And then that sort of evolved into, um, you know, the age 10 or 11, um, my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, um, was, was an oil painter. Um, and she was taking some classes in, in Florida where I grew up, um, from a local artist. And she sort of introduced me to this artist and, um, you know, she just kind of encouraged me to continue doing what I was doing. And then about the age 12 or 13, um, I started getting into fine art, um, you know, doing oil painting, uh, pastel and oil painting. Um, and I really loved that, especially um, uh, I kind of started out doing caricatures first, about age 11. And then that evolved into doing portraits. You know, typically you do portraits first and then you, you evolve into caricatures because caricatures are right. <laughs> you know, sort of an exaggerated portrait. But I kind of went the backward way, which tends to be how I tend to do things. I kind of learn things, I guess, uh, maybe a, a little bit uh, in, in, in reverse. But, um, um, but that's how I got my start uh, artistically you know, continued through high school and, and then uh, went on to um, uh, a junior college. I took two years um, at a junior college in Florida, Central Florida Community College. Um, and at the time in November of 1991, I had a one man show. Um, and I believe to this day, I still, I still uh, own the title of being the only student to ever be awarded a one man show. I had 30, wow. I think 30, 31 pieces. Yeah, it was great. It was awesome. I mean, yeah, I got newspaper coverage. <laughs> And it, and it was really cool. And then I uh, uh, finished my two-year degree um, and then was looking around at art schools. Uh, two years before, I was looking at Ringling. And then, you know, it's always about a girl, right? <laughs> the story's always about a girl. So uh, my, my then girlfriend was moving to Atlanta um, to be with uh, one of her sisters and go to school here. And, uh, you know, I thought, well, I, if I go to Ringling, I'm going to be nine hours by car from her. But if I go to Savannah College of Art and Design, I am four hours by car. So I was shooting for Savannah College of Art and Design. And, you know, things sometimes happen um, sort of fortuitously. Uh, that was really, I think, the better move for me. Um, I remember sitting in front of the, the registrar um, with my grandmother. Um, we had come up on a weekend during the summer of 92. You know, I'm talking to the registrar and all of a sudden the, the um, head of the illustration department, a lady by the name of Julie Mueller Brown, very bohemian was passing by the office and uh, the registrar called out to her, says, Julie, she says, come in here a minute. She says, I want you to look at this young man's artwork. You know, and back then we're talking 92, this is, you know, pre-digital age, you know, we had these things called slides. And so, you know, uh, the registrar hands Julie my slides of, of, of my, my, my presentation artwork, my portfolio, and Julie, you know, holds it up, you know, up to the light and she's looking over the top of her glasses and she looks at me and she says, what did you say here? What is your, um, uh, your, your professional move. And I said, well, you know, I really want to be a painter. Um, and she said, um, no, she said, uh, you could actually teach the painting department. She says, you need to be an illustrator. And of course, when she said illustrator, I just lit up because I mean, all of my heroes were illustrators. Um, comic book illustrators, Norman Rockwell. That's what I'm curious about. Through all these years of studying, you have this this thread connecting you. Were you always a Superman fan through all these years studying? Oh gosh, absolutely. I tell you, you know, I remember <laughs> um, I was probably about about the time I started drawing, about four years old, and I remember, you know, <clears throat> and and probably every you know young boy, uh, especially in the '70s, growing up, uh, because you know we had the Super Friends on Saturday morning. 
and we had George Reeves uh, on on uh, you know the weekdays at 3 p.m. after school. Um, so you know, and we had Mego figures, which was a big thing for me back then, uh, which I still collect. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, but you know, I mean, I mean that putting on a, a towel, wrapping around a towel, you know, towel around your neck, and you know, running around the yard or trying to jump off of, you know, unfortunately, I jumped off of my mother's um, uh, the bar in the in the between the the, the kitchen and the uh, the dining room, um, and landed uh, on the back of my head on the corner of the coffee table. So I had like four or five stitches in the back of my head from that. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, that happens when you're trying to fly and can't. Gravity is a harsh mistress. <laughs> <laughs> Gravity is a harsh mistress, but you literally tried to fly because of, of this love of superheroes. Tell us about your whole love of Superman. How did you come to love Superman? How does he resonate with you? We lived for that as kids. We didn't have video games and things like that. Uh, you know, we had to create using our imagination. So, you know, I'd go out and play with my little brother, you know, and we'd have like little Mego, you know, uh, uh, WrestleMania fights with Mego figures. You know, <laughs> Who's going to win today, <laughs> Superman or Batman, the Hulk or Spider-Man? <laughs> you know? so, so those were things that, um, uh, that you know, inspired me and, 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 and resonated with me about the character. How did this Superman fandom lead to the painting behind you? Well, um, that's a very interesting and, and convoluted story. Um, and probably the, probably the best way to address that would be, uh, I was looking for a, an extended version of Superman the movie. Um, and it would have been March of 1997. Um, and I called around uh, every uh, comic book store here in the Atlanta area um, that was listed in the phone book. You know, there's no internet back then. Um, and I, I reached a, a, a guy at a comic book store who knew Jim Bowers, um, Jim Bowers of capedwonder.com. Um, and again, this was pre capedwonder.com. Um, but he said, if there's anybody out there who knows if there is a copy available of Superman, the movie in extended form, Jim will know it. So he gave me his phone number. I gave Jim a call. And I think we spoke for like three hours. I mean, I felt like, <laughs> like, like I had met, you know, my kindred spirit, like my, like my twin. Uh, right. Uh, my, 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 my brother in Superman. Um, and we just, we just hit it off uh, wonderfully. Um, and so I would say uh, sometime in 1997, might have been September or so. Again, this has been you know, 20 some odd years ago. Um, I was going through Jim's collection of photos and he had some very rare photos um, of Superman, uh, of Christopher Reeve. And there was one that, that, that caught my attention. Lex Luthor goes to, says to Otis, you know, take the gentleman's cape. And Otis walks over to Superman and, you know, Christopher Reeve gives Otis the stare down, you know, don't tug on Superman's cape. <laughs> and, and so I did that as a drawing. Um, and it was the first time that I had sort of revisited my childhood character in all of the years um, going from doing, you know, comic books to caricatures to, you know, portraits and fine art. Um, so it was an opportunity for me to take what I had learned uh, as a fine artist and apply that to the character. Um, and then about a year later, um, would have been, uh, let's see, um, well, the painting was finished July 9th, uh, in 1998, two days before my 27th birthday. So wow. prior to that, um, I had asked Jim about maybe, you know, doing a, another piece. Um, but this time I wanted to do it not in pencil, but in oil. Uh, and I was going through again, you know, some photos in his collection and I, and I found that photo right there. Um, the only difference is, is that the hand, his, his fist that is elevated, um, was cut off right above the wrist. So mm. I had to sort of improvise, and I used another buddy of mine, Tom Key, um, who I'm still friends with. We're still good art buddies, uh, and, and he's a huge Superman fan as well, big DC fan. Uh, <laughs> and I photographed his fist, which I still have right there. You. <laughs> Can you That's believe amazing. I, I, I did this. not expect that. <laughs> I kept this in the easel uh, that I, I painted that painting on. And it was still in the drawer, big wooden easel. It's still after, after all these, I couldn't believe I found, found it two months ago. I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Um, so uh, I superimposed that fist on uh, the photo that Jim loaned me. Um, and, and to me, that, that image sort of resonated with um, something very Americana. It, I felt like I had seen it before. And then it dawned on me. I was like, well, it's the Statue of Liberty. I mean, it's the right arm raised. It's the left arm down. The only difference is his head is back. But it's very 
um, heroic. It's very iconic. Uh, you know, the Absolutely. point of view is looking up and, you know, we look up to our heroes. So I thought it would be a perfect image to do um, a painting of, uh, of Superman. And that's how that started. I was trying to come up with a concept, an idea of, um, and yes, I am superhero, uh, you know, <laughs> geekified all the way. <laughs> I was looking for something that I could put in the background that would be a graphic element um, that would be just perfect for the image. And of course, you know, the Statue of Liberty ran across my mind. Um, and, and then, of course, you know, the, the American flag. So I started looking at, at, at designs, you know, for the flag. And of course, back then we're talking, you know, pre-internet days. So um, Jim uh, worked for Terra Materials at the time in their um, digital printing department. And back then, because it was pre-internet days, they had uh, catalogs, um, stock photography catalogs. And there were thousands of images. And you could purchase the images for, um, you know, a, a certain amount, um, and they were royalty free. So I found a few images going through some of his, his stock photography books um, and then, you know, sort of worked uh, the design so that it, it sort of, again, was uplifting because, you know, the, the stars and the stripes sort of follow that upward, you know, when you're looking right. at the painting, facing it, that, that left movement. And believe me, I, I am not by any stretch of the imagination. Anyone who knows me will never tell you I'm a lazy artist. But I was thinking to myself, you know, I really am not keen about painting 13 stripes and 50 stars. Sure. So I was trying, <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine the time that would take. So I was trying to come up with a way, something clever. Um, being an illustrator, you know, we were taught, you know, um, to try to create an, an, uh, a story, you know, um, um, infuse an allegorical sense into your painting. So I, 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 was, I was thinking to myself, well, you know, Christopher Reeve was 24 the first time he played Superman. But the last time he played Superman in Superman 4, um, The Quest for Peace, he was um, 34 years old. So I thought, you know, um, I could do three stripes of red, three stripes of white, and four stars. And that's what I did. And here's an interesting thing. Um, you know, 22 plus years I've looked at this painting and I've never thought of any other numerical um, connection to the painting. Um, and uh, in Jim Bauer's uh, Facebook page, uh, capedwonder.com uh, Facebook page, um, a gentleman by the name of Bill Williams um, uh, uh, came up with what he thought was the answer to, you know, what do you think the significance is of the stars and number of stars and stripes in the painting, which Jim had posted on his Facebook page right when you guys launched um, the, the the print run uh, available for presale. And Bill came back and said, "Well, I think I think it's you know six foot four. Christopher Reeve was six foot four. There are six stripes and there's four wow. stars. It never <laughs> dawned on me, never to think I've looked at this painting for twenty two plus years and have never thought." Six foot four. Wow. So there's another connection. <laughs> Thank you, Bill That's Williams. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. So Christopher Reeve himself loved your painting. Can you tell us how he first came to see the work? That has uh, every bit to do with uh, with Jim Bowers. You know, in, in many ways, I feel like Jim is sort of the co-creator of this painting because, um, you know, Jim was the one who loaned me the photograph for the painting. Um, he's also the one who named the painting Someone to Believe in. Wow. We were standing in my studio um, <laughs> as I was painting this, um, and, and at that time I was living in an apartment in my sunroom. Uh, we were looking at the painting, and you know, I just wasn't coming up with anything that I thought was apropos. I mean, everything sort of felt a little, um, you know, over the top or or just not 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 a good fit. So you know, Jim just all of a sudden says, "Well, what about someone to believe in?" You know, and I thought about it, and I was like, you know, that's really a great title because it doesn't say anything Superman. I mean, obviously we know it's Superman. So uh, I like the fact that it sort of went a little bit beyond. And so that's how the painting got its name, Someone to Believe in. I guess around the time 2000 came around, um, Jim uh, had been uh, working with the Christopher Reeve uh, Paralysis Foundation and had befriended Christopher Reeve's personal assistant, Lori Allen. Um, and he had, had contacted Lori um, and said, Christopher Meadows, this friend of mine, uh, created this painting of Christopher Reeve's Superman. Um, he had a print made, um, which Jim framed, paid to frame it, and then he sent it to Christopher Reeve. Uh, but we never heard anything. Um, and mm. so, you know, Jim was like, you know, what, do you do you know 
uh, if it's there or even if I describe it to you, do you think you could find it? And um, she said, yeah, she said, I, I think we can find it. So he described the package to her and she found it. Um, and his birthday was coming up. That probably would have been late 2000 or so. Um, but his birthday in 2001, September 25th, as we know, uh, yeah. um, she said, I think that, that, that we can find this. Um, and it took them three weeks to find it. But they found it. And they presented it to him on his birthday, September 25th, 2001. Wow. Now, the significance of that date is that it was exactly two weeks to the day after 9-11. And for those of us who lived through 9-11, um, that was probably the greatest period of uh, American nationalism since World War II. I mean, you had people that were running into burning buildings, saving people they didn't even know. You know, it wasn't about, you know, I'm white, you're black, I'm, I'm, I'm Catholic, you're, you're Protestant. You know, it was, we're Americans. And so I think that that was, that was very strong in the American uh, mindset and also in Christopher Reed's mindset. So seeing that painting um, two weeks after 9-11, when we saw American flags being waved everywhere in this country, uh, I think really resonated with Chris. Um, and I think he was very, very impressed um, by the fact, which he mentions in his uh, letter to me, thank you letter to me, um, about uh, you know the, the, the likeness or the, the similarity in pose to the Statue of Liberty. And I have the uh, letter that he sent me framed behind me there. It took me seven years to get that framed. I was so afraid that something was going to happen to it. You know, the framer would you know, spill something on it or it would get ripped or, or possibly even stolen. Um, but, but I have that letter there and, and I remember the day that Jim called me and he said, are you sitting down? And I said, um, no. And he said, well, you might want to take a seat. And I said, all right. And, you know, Jim, Jim has a good sense of humor. So I'm so, I was sort of used to him kind of kidding me or ribbing me about things. Right. <laughs> and he goes, you're going to get a letter from Christopher Reeve. And there was this probably two or three second pause where my mind was trying to wrap myself around what he had just said to me. And I said, I just kind of laughed and I said, yeah, really? Okay. <laughs> Very funny. I said, seriously though. And he goes, no, he said, you're going to get a letter from Christopher Reed. And I said, uh, why? And he said, he was so impressed with your painting, the print of your painting that we sent him. He said, um, he wants to thank you personally. And Jim told me that um, Chris had a photo signed by the NASA astronauts um, at that time, uh, that uh, was hanging in his office. And he took that uh, photo down and replaced it with the print of my painting, Someone to Believe in. So that when you walk in his office, that's the first thing that you see. And Chris said, you know, everyone that's come to visit me since I've had that hanging on my wall um, has commented on it right away. I don't know if, that, if you can see that, if I put that up close enough there. But that's the letter. I kind of see it, yeah. Wow. And then that's the envelope. I didn't throw away anything. <laughs> <laughs> I love that the envelope is framed too. Absolutely. This thing is, is, is my most prized possession. I tell you, if, I mean, God forbid if my house ever catches fire. I am, I am, I'm running out the house with my wife, my son, my dogs, and this print. <laughs> there you I, go. Mean, I mean, this love. Um, so October 2nd, 2001, dear Chris, over the last 22 years, I've received enough Superman paintings, posters, lunch boxes, and memorabilia to sink a ship. I've always treasured the best letters from fans, and some of the other items have done well at auctions for charity. I have to say that your painting is by far the best, most accomplished, and significant Superman gift I've ever received. I've already hung it in just the right place in my office. When you come in, your eye goes straight to it. Almost all of the visitors I've had since I put it up have praised it right away. I'm especially impressed by the muted colors of the flag behind me and the obvious similarity to the Statue of Liberty. I don't remember ever striking that pose for any photograph or scene in the film that makes your interpretation and its symbolism completely unique. Thank you so much for being the one to finally present me with a, super, with a portrait of Superman that truly makes me proud. Sincerely yours, Christopher Reeve. Now, this letter was dictated by him, obviously, um, you know, being paralyzed, he couldn't write it himself. Um, and then it's signed at the bottom, Christopher Reed in parentheses, L.A. for Lori Allen, his personal assistant, who had the legal right to sign his name. So this to me is going 
you know, when I get buried someday, this is going with me. <laughs> right. Oh, that's absolutely amazing. That is an absolutely incredible story. Thank you so much for sharing the letter, the, the story of, of how he got it and how he loved it so much. Sideshow is delighted to make this painting available as a fine art print in a limited run of 500. And you can find it at sideshow.com. So now many more Superman fans can have this beautiful and inspirational work in their homes. We made it available on September 25th in honor of Christopher Reeve's birthday. And so we're thrilled to bring it to you now. I would really like uh, to thank a few people who without, um, you know, without whom this would not have been possible. Um, of course, Jim Bowers um, for, you know, promoting um, this uh, print run on his iHeartRadio Caped Wonder Superman podcast, um, which is available anywhere that people listen to podcasts, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and his CapedWonder.com uh, website. Um, which is filled with fascinating information about the, the films, Christopher Reeve, his legacy. Thank you, Jim, uh, my, my super friend of 23 plus years and counting. Um, without you, none of this would have been possible. Also, I want to thank uh, my friend Thomas Key, Tom Key, um, for his uh, use of his super fist um, that replaced the, uh, the, the fist that uh, was missing in the image that, that Jim loaned me. Um, also to my buddy, uh, Tim Hansen. Uh, costume fabrication manager at Sideshow Collectibles, um, who's also doing a really, really great uh, sort of a parallel um, creation uh, uh, 3D um, uh, uh, premium format statue. Um, we kind of started this process at the same time. And we've kind of been, you know, uh, just geeking out over this whole process of being able to celebrate the legacy of Christopher Reeve. And so thank you to Tim for passing my information along to Gracie by Fulco. And of course, Gracie by Fulco, the super girl that she is, uh, she's been wonderful. I really enjoyed working with her. She is the fine art print program manager at Sideshow. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, uh, Sideshow team, um, and, and all of you folks at home who are gonna be watching this. Stay tuned for more Sideshow New York Con, and don't forget to let your geek side show.